after the plant shut down, I thought we were home free after San Onofre shut down. And then I started researching the nuclear waste. And I found out we have a major problem here at San Onofre and actually in the whole country. Um, the waste is not being stored safely. Um, it's uh, stored in spent fuel pools that are very dangerous, require constant watering. They packed them really tight. So any safety mechanism they used to have aren't there anymore. They're using this zirconium cladding that even puts us at risk for a fire. And um, they're more vulnerable to terrorist attacks. So there's a lot of issues with the spent fuel. They're talking about moving it from the spent fuel pools into dry cask or dry canisters. And the canisters they want to put them in are not, are not safe. Uh, there's a few, there's fuel called high burn up fuel. This is fuel that's that's they've allowed to burn longer in the reactor. It's uh, they they express it in terms of gigawatt days per ton of um, uranium. But basically, they've allowed them to increase the time the fuel burns in the reactor. Till now, it's up in this range, and and the higher this goes, the higher the rate of this protect, protective cladding failure. And the NRC and the industry, they have no solution for this. So they're putting fuel in canisters that could fail. The cladding fails. Our, our first level of protection from radiation is gone. Our only other protection from the certain types of the radiation is in a canister that looks something like, like this. This is, a, this is a canister, a stainless steel canister, 5 8 inch stainless steel. This one holds 24 fuel assemblies. This is a picture of a enlarged picture of a fuel assembly. The cladding is a real, real super thin layer of zirconium. Uh, all these rods, so these are all rods, and they're filled with pellets of uh, pellets of uranium. Um, and then each one of these goes into one of those holes in the canister. The cladding. This is an, a, a picture of the cladding breaking down, and and this breaks down. The radiation can get out of that first level. So if this canister fails, the, the radiation will get out. And if we get oxygen in there, we could even have an, an explosion and have a major uh, radiation release. Um, they, they have what's called uh, damaged uh, fuel cans, which we're recommending. These are um, stainless steel cans that go around each fuel assembly, and then you put that into this bigger one. Um, our position is they should be used for all fuel because we do not know, uh, we can't, there's no way to tell for sure that the cladding's failing or when it's going to fail. And we know with high burn up, it can fail after it's in the dry canister. And being by the ocean, we have coastal corrosion issues. We can actually have cracking of this, th this thin canister. This is an example of stress corrosion cracking. We, so you can actually have cracks going through that. Uh, 5 8 inch uh, stainless steel. Regarding the coastal corrosion, if we were to have a leak from these cracks or um, a lot of times the crack can come from the seal. If it's a bolted canister, that's where the weakest link is and then a weld in the weld in the canister, that's a weak link. If that is broken and, the, and that inner cladding is gone, then we can have a major radiation explosion, and if oxygen gets to it, it can result in a hydrogen explosion, and then the radiation would go everywhere, like is happening at Fukushima right now, on, on, on that scale, except it'll be right here in the United States. And there's a, a document on the website, sadandofreesafety.org, that goes into uh, a detail about all the things they don't know, the monitoring we don't have to even know what's going on inside those canisters, and yet we're dealing with 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 tons of, of radiation, much more than was at Chernobyl, much more that was in our atmospheric t testing. So we could have millions of curries of cesium in our environment. We could basically lose Southern California here damage our food supply for the nation, um, damage our import-export cargo business here, which is 40% for the nation. Um, so th this, this problem here at San Onofre is good, will affect the whole world if, if, they, if we don't do this right.
it's important that people get educated on this because even people in the nuclear industry, even people at the NRC don't understand details about this. There's been a lot of propaganda. Um, one of the things that we really need is we need a, uh, a study on what the best technology is for, for dry canisters because what, if we leave it up to what's happening down with the NRC, um, um, we're, we're not going to have a good solution. We're not going to have a safe solution. These canisters are going to be here on site at all the, the reactors in the country for this probably 60 plus years. And so it's important for all of us to, to deal with this issue because if we don't, nobody else is. And we're hoping to get funding uh, to hire an independent expert to make recommendations on the best canister designs and to have the, the lobbying and the legal power to make it happen. Okay. And for more information, um, you can check sananofresafety.org. Uh, um, it's got, it has more information and all, all the information is cited with scientific and, and government, uh, government documents. Okay.